will be a challenge. Over at the operations center in Cranbeck, he is putting together a plan in case the beach and creek fire gets too close. It's so big, mapping it accurately has been an issue. One of the last estimates put it at around 100 square kilometers. 65 residences in the St. Mary Valley have already been placed on evacuation order and people living there are told to get out. They're hoping that Kimberly and Marysville won't be evacuated as well. As if the wildfire danger hasn't felt real enough, people in Prince George woke up to dark skies. It is pitch black again. It's not nice. This is 8.40 a.m. as the wind carried in the smoke. 20 minutes later, it's like the sun goes down instead of up. 10 minutes after that, you'd think it's the middle of the night. And then, about an hour and a half later, daylight returns so dark and it was just this ominous uh, dark cloud hanging over the community it was just it was it was unbelievable it's in part due to the massive shovel lake wildfire burning to the west some of the wind in the past few days has actually whipped up pretty good and you could just imagine how fast the fires uh, travel in the wind on the edge of that fire is fort st james the entire town could be forced to leave Further southeast, in and around Kimberley, ash from the Meachin fire falls from the sky. As of this morning, almost 8,000 people are on alert. We're a bit on the anxious side, and we packed like five days ago. We just have a couple suitcases back here. We got a couple more in the house that are being packed. With nearly 600 fires burning across the province, it's likely residents still have weeks of uncertainty ahead. The overwhelming clouds of smoke are gigantic, increasingly dangerous, and constantly on the move. Even my dog, he doesn't even want to come out and die. Uh... Smart dog. Forest fire smoke is full of toxic particulate matter called black carbon, which can be really bad for you, deadly even with too much exposure. And just look at how much black carbon NASA has identified over Western Canada. It's not just British Columbians at risk. The smoke has blanketed vast parts of Alberta to pretty eerie effect. This video is from Edmonton, taken a couple days ago at 10 in the morning. Kind of looks like a scene from a Terminator movie, the end of the world. And Calgary, too, has struggled in the dark. So where is that haze going now? So, I don't know what's going on in British Columbia, but I just now want to document the ultra-low frequencies that have been going off on the West Coast, Washington, and California in particular. I have never seen these frequencies shooting off in California like I have during the fires. So, the ultra-low frequencies are the straight-lined bands that you see pulsing right there. And this is the Sacramento area, Chico. Uh, this area is close to Redding. Vandenberg Air Force Base at night or early morning is when you see these frequencies being emitted and look at how far they extend they extend quite a distance up to 300 miles but many of these frequencies are being set off in areas close to the fires and that these frequencies are being set off because ultra-low frequencies can cause earthquakes. And they're set off near Oroville Dam. Well, one would have to say that these people are incredibly reckless. Now, ultra-low frequencies can be 
emitted into the atmosphere from Gwen Towers, but they can also go through the ground. So when you think about earthquakes and dams, you don't want these frequencies going through the ground. So up here in Spokane, Washington, you have fires going on. Uh, it's interesting that you don't see this during the day. You see this often after midnight, in between like midnight and five o'clock in the morning. So all of the straight lines are ultra low frequencies. Now they can control, steer, manipulate the weather with these ultra low frequencies. They can cause earthquakes. And using the technology with these frequencies that they can manipulate the jet stream that they can actually hold back weather fronts one would think too that they could create wind this is Portland I'm just documenting what I have been seeing and when you see these frequencies going off close to Reading where the car fire was are these frequencies close to the Mendocino complex fires you really do have to wonder what is going on I've heard from a few subscribers new subscribers who have said you know they've just woken up to what's happening they in the area of the fires and they are recognizing something is very wrong with these fires so these frequencies are set off now well Phoenix Tucson you're getting slammed but these frequencies being set off in California it seems to just be like the entire state and you can see them pulsing that's a pulse and with these pulses they can create an awful lot of damage I got some news today that my life is going to change so I'm not quite at uh, I'm I'm not really at my best <laughs> I haven't been at my best in a very very long time I'm going to be posting some different kind of videos but I did want to document this I wanted it up these ultra low frequencies you can see the the lines pulsating uh, look at that look at just one area it's covering from the coast right into Nevada that's how extraordinary these frequencies are they are so incredibly expansive they can also use these frequencies yes to control people's minds so they want to keep all of these people in California completely and utterly just going along with the official narrative that these fires are normal using these frequencies is that in part why they're shooting them off so much I don't know But boy, 
They really are all over California. And that's very clear, right? You see the straight lined bands. So if you are unable to see those straight lined bands fanning out in other areas, go back and just take a look. But I'm going to leave the link to the National Mosaic. And you can check it out later on if you're still up. I'm not sure if it's different on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm three hours ahead. I would think it's the exact same thing that you would be looking at. If I'm looking at it at midnight, you're looking at it at 9 p.m., you're probably going to get the same images. But wow, they are doing a number on you guys. But they're doing a number on a whole lot of us. And if I have it in me, I'll post another video letting you see what is happening because we are they are using these frequencies as a weapon against us and it has been a real wow seeing these frequencies just <laughs> well I'm going to after I get through the 15th show you what is taking place presently but here, there, it's going off in Yuma. It goes right into California, Palm Springs, Spokane. You got the ultra low frequencies. Montana, you have fires now, and your frequencies, yep, being set off as well. But this is now the fifteenth. This, this is an every night occurrence, and you can see how straight the bands are from this distance so I really hope everybody's okay and that my new subscribers who have left comments about these fires and they evacuating I hope that nothing happens. But look, this is Oroville, and you've got, and or uh, Mendocino Complex is like southwest of Oroville, and you have these frequencies going right into Mendocino. Yeah. Lots going on, guys. A whole lot of people getting destroyed. These frequencies going into Yosemite? Really? Okay. So, what we have presently this is Montana and you've got a lot of harp nextrad rings Doppler radar can shoot off high frequencies heating up the ionosphere and then with the ultra low frequencies the two combined they can create cyclones, earthquakes, heat up the atmosphere, so you have these intersecting harp rings right here in Montana. You've got these ultra low frequencies being set off. Here it's very clear. I think this is 
Is this Great Falls? Yes. It's not good. You have these frequencies, Missoula. And Spokane. Seattle area. It's pretty quiet in Oregon lately, but you have the frequencies being set off. Northern California. Wow. Here they are. You see the straight lined bands right here. That's clear. All of these that fan out these straight lines, ultra low frequencies. Oroville, Chico. Oh boy. You've got a real nice pulse going through San Jose, Santa Cruz, Monterey. And all of these frequencies. Modesto. Extending far. And when these are being set off, it's not just that they can affect your mind. They can, uh, they can steer weather fronts. They can manipulate the weather, create her earthquakes. But everyone is affected physically. Everyone is affected by these ultra-low frequencies. And even if you don't feel them, you're still affected by them. You've got a nice harp next red ring off the coast. Where is this? Los Angeles area and a little north. And the ultra low frequencies shooting right through it. Now, I've posted so many videos on ultra low frequencies and in those videos, documents, early, early Soviet studies on or experiments with ultra low frequencies and how they could control the limbs of dogs and a whole lot. So I, I'm just, I don't, I don't have any me to do that right now, but you've got another. Next rad harp ring and did I recently read about how the water temperature of the Pacific was very hot they can change the temperature of water with this technology ultra low frequencies Yosemite, Sonora. You have ultra low frequencies, which you can see. I don't want to tell you to get up close to the screen, but they're right there. These very thin, light blue, straight lined bands. Frequencies are going right through. Um, Bakersfield area all the way north to, well, even past Stockton. And on out to San Jose, 
Here you have a pulse that's going right off the coast, just south of Monterey. Vandenberg Air Force Base is very active all the time, but all everybody in Santa Barbara and Santa Maria and on up just south of Monterey. Everybody's getting affected by these frequencies. They can make you feel exhausted, they can make you feel sick, they can they can do an awful lot. But now you have another next red heart ring. So with the ultra low frequencies pulsing through it. One, two, I guess that's it, two. Well, that's very worrisome. So, and here you also have a very active night of frequencies right into Mexico to the San Diego area. That's Yuma. Is it Yuma? Yeah. Extending right on up to Palm Springs. Look at this. So, yeah, just documenting what is taking place. And it's not just California that's getting hammered. It seems the entire country is getting hammered. And I'll just do a quick scroll through. Idaho, southern Idaho, Nevada you seem pretty quiet tonight except for Las Vegas, see how straight lined that is, okay frequencies. Uh, am I in Arizona? Yes. Okay. Phoenix and Tucson. Radar stations have been very active. The ultra low frequencies very active. New Mexico, Albuquerque has been very active. And the area of Las Cruces, is that how you pronounce that area? Um, that town. Frequencies being shot off from Air Force bases all over the country. No, I have never seen it like. I have been seeing it in the last couple of months, but in the last couple of weeks, wow, they have just really said, no holds barred, let's just do it. Very often you have an X-ray harp ring that extends a wide berth from Mexico, New Mexico, Arizona, and here you go, another next red harp ring. Um, last night you had about six intersecting from Louisiana on into Mississippi, Houston, all the way down. Here you have another one right here. You can see it. Here you have another one. What are they? doing.
or what are they getting ready to do? Who knows? But Oklahoma, you have been, wow, active. And guess what? You've been having a lot of earthquakes. A lot of storms, a lot of beam action going on. Um, and all of this, you can, if you know what to look for, you can see the next red hop rings throughout along with the ultra low frequencies. Here are the straight line bands. Here are the straight line bands. Um, Nebraska, Kansas, never quite seen you so active with your ultra low frequencies going off. And South Dakota, well you've got an X-Rad Harp ring with ultra low frequencies. And Minot, wow, you're quiet tonight, but you were blasting last night. Let me know how you guys feel. Wherever you are, because Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, intersecting ultra low frequencies, it's been off the chart charts and actually it looks pretty quiet at least in Minnesota tonight get down a little oh you got a lot of pulsating ultra low frequencies some kind of laser beam ultra low frequencies being set off Indiana Ohio Missouri Michigan, you're still getting plastered. Wisconsin, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, all over. All over. All of these straight line bands, they're all frequencies. We are getting hammered. Arkansas, really bad. And Louisiana, you actually look a little bit better tonight than you did last night. Mississippi, last night, I was thinking, okay, are you going to be getting more flash flooding? And also let me know what's going on in your area, please in terms of the weather because it's really hard to get the information now because all of the events that are taking place would have been the, the mainstream media news but now we have flash flooding occurring all over and yes they can create flash flooding with these ultra low frequencies there's a lot of ways in which they can create these rains. So, but now you really have to dig for it. Dig for the news. In all of these areas, ultra low frequencies going right out of I think it's Shoreham, Long Island, New York. You can see an ultra low frequency cutting that precipitation off. All of your uh, white dots in the middle of the blue. And Portland, Maine. That's the only bit of well, that's Caribou, Maine. Well, I thought that went into Canada. Okay, Caribou, Maine. Um, so, just wanted to document, really, particularly in California and Washington. Um, but, yeah. 
And here we go. Next red harp rings intersecting. And that's what? Off the coast of how far down am I? Um, yeah, North Carolina. And it seems that you're getting pretty intense storms. North Carolina from Raleigh, Durham area, blasted with ultra low frequencies almost every night for, I would say, at least 10 days. Yep, here I am, Anderson, South Carolina. And. Now, we either have ultra low frequencies going right through, we have these, sh these pulsating like beam attacks that go into three areas of the northwest upstate of South Carolina. They come out of an area in between Gainesville and Atlanta. So if you're having difficulty thinking, if you're feeling a little uh, not quite right, if you're feeling depressed, anxious, um, whatever, and you feel like the circumstances that you're living don't warrant you feeling the way you are, it may very well just be these frequencies. So I'll link below to National Mosaic, and you can check it out. Jacksonville had pretty intense frequencies for a while. And you know what? Right in the area where you've got a mass die-off of mammals and the red tide, the blue-green algae, you are having incredible frequencies going from the Sarasota, Tampa area for days. So I just wanted to let you know a whole lot is going on. And the thing about having the knowledge about what these frequencies can do if you have an awareness of your own self and you're feeling a particular way and you can't understand why you're feeling that you can mitigate a lot of your reactions if you know what's happening you can just kind of wait out how you're feeling. But I have to tell you, these frequencies now, they are just exploding every friggin' night. So, it's hard to mitigate something that's going on every single night. And why do they set these off at night? To disrupt our sleep. And BC, your night time at 10 a.m., please, you've got to understand that that was not caused by your fire. Something is going on. And I'm going to end with this, and I'm sorry it's so long, but I did research when I was back in Great Barrington. It was like 2011. I was pretty sure that I bookmarked it. I cannot find it, but in this paper I read, and it had a lot to do with the frequencies and their use of it, but I came across a paragraph where they were talking about being able to create nighttime for, no joke, two years. Two years. So. 
I wish that I could find that that paper, but you know, I'd love to be able to confirm what I just said. I did read it, but I I was using a different computer. Now I'm on this computer and I too much has happened in my life and I have no clue. It might be on my old computer. Anyway, guys, I hope that all of you are feeling just wonderful and having a good weekend. And I hope you all can sleep well tonight. Ciao.